Come to this talk, Stream Lit Meet Web Assembly ST Lite, presented by speaker Yuichiro Tachibana. If you have any question, please feel free to type it on slide door. Okay, let's give it a warm round of applause to speaker Yuichiro. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for very much for the introduction and thank you everyone uh, for being here at uh, even this very last talk in this conference. Well, uh, first of all, I am Yuichiro coming from Japan and I am also a Python developer working especially in the field, something like um, computer vision, machine learning and data science and sometimes web development. I have been also active in several OSS projects, including Streamlit, that is um, one of the core topic in this talk today. And recently I have started my job at Hugging Face. Uh, so please ask me if you like some Hugging Face sticker after this talk. And I also have the job at that company also working in some streamly related stuff. And you know, even though my title is Streamed Advocate, but also I am doing some development in addition to some advocacy. Well, today I would like to, to introduce the software OSS project ST Lite, that is WebAssembly port of Streamlit. But before we will take a closer look into ST Lite itself, we let me uh, introduce Streamlit first in short, and also discuss about its pros and cons as well. That will be also the birth, a background of birth of ST Lite. First of all, have you ever heard of this framework, Streamlit? How many of you? I see, thank you very much. Probably about 50%, the great. Um, this is kind of an introduction slide with Streamlit. The, its official website says it is a first way to build and share data apps. What does it mean? Uh, before uh, taking a closer look into it, but at first, you know, very, as, an, as an overview, Due to its unique but convenient way of creating web, UI, uh, web applications just by writing Python code, Streamly has become one of the most popular web UI frameworks, kind of, you know, just written in Python. You can actually find some uh, very interesting, impressive web applications written by Streamlit, uh, you know, I mean, it's written in Python using Streamlit in the official list and its official web page. Also, another great thing about Streamlit is its well um, rich and active and welcoming community where many third party developers have been developing and maintaining um, so many custom components that is kind of extension of Streamlit that enhances it to cover um, very wide range of applications from, for example, like molecular biology stuff or some geographical data or like more media, multimedia stuff like this uh, in interactive way. Although I only could pick up two examples in this slide due to the limit of slide surface, but you can find very unique but useful uh, custom component that covers your specific use case in the, the, the component list linked here in the, its official website. Then let's get back to this first you know, initial slide introducing Streamlit and let's focus on to this sentence saying that Streamlit turns data scripts into shareable web apps in minutes, all in pure Python, no front end, exper no front -end experience required. Let's see what it means. Um, assume that we have a single Python file named app.py like this, where um, at the first line we import a streamlit package as st alias like this, like this, and in the third line we call its st.title function. By the way, in the context of streamlit, we call this kind of function as component. So let's say here we use st.title component with an um, string literal argument, hello world. In the next line, we also use st.text input component, and we also assign its return value into the variable name, which is also used to refer to in the next line inside the argument passed to the st.write component. Then, when we run the shell command like this, sorry, like this, streamlit run, 
um, with an argument pointing to the input file app.py, the streamlit server-side process starts and starts behaving at web browser so that we can access that from our web browsers and we can use the web applications like this. You can find it's, it is kind of interactive where we can input some text input into the text, well, input element. And then you can, when you hit the enter key, what you input into this element, like some your name will be automatically sh displayed in the next line here. Well, what's interesting here is that, is that we, although we only have written the very simple uh, Python script that do not have any, well, imperative or reactive stuff like callbacks, Streamlit automatically converted this source script into this, well, interactive web application that has some cool, uh, nice look and feel with a good interactivity, interactiveness. That's good, that's good, right? But let's see what happens under the hood from a more technical perspective. When you start streamlit run command like this in, on your server, of course, Python runtime will start and of course, Streamlit package will be loaded onto it. That has several components like, for example, web server or static files or something or whatever. But at this point, at this moment, let's focus on the time when, um, when we access the web server from our web browser. At this time, the static files like uh, index.html or main.js will be loaded into the web browser through the web server, and um, front-end application will start to start running on the web browser. Then the front-end app, that is JavaScript application, will establish the bidirectional data connection connected with a web server so that whenever user interact with the front-end application, for example, while clicking the buttons or input text data or whatever else, the front-end application will send that kind of a, a, such a user interaction event to the web server. And on the web server, the script runner will execute the source file, like something like the app.py we have written in the previous slide, with the input data sent from the front-end. So that script runner will emit the execution result from this app.py, and that will also be sent back to the front-end application so that this front-end app will re-render or update the content displayed in the front-end page like this. This is what they, like a magic, the core of the magic Streamlit does. I think it's very cool, right? You know, this, due to this oh, fantastic um, mechanism, we can create interactive web application just by writing simple Python code, right? However, we can also see this architecture as kind of um, traditional server client architecture, right? So we can easily imagine that there are some type of drawbacks. For example, um, it serves web pages from a web server and runs script, you know, Python script you write on the server to process the input data. Of course, we cannot use such hosted stream streamlit application in an offline environment. And also, whenever we want to process some type of data with the hosted streamlit applications, there is no data privacy because such data, all such data will be sent to, must be sent to the remote host. That sometimes violate the data privacy or some policy on your organization or especially the private company or something like that. Also, from the viewpoint of the service developers, scalability and the maintainability can also be a problem because you know, we have to set up the server with the dynamic Python runtime onto it. And we have to maintain it you know, forever. So here is where STLite comes in. STLite is a port of Streamlit to WebAssembly with the concept of client-side execution. 
In other words, SD Lite a fork of Streamlit that runs completely on web browsers with the power of Pyodide. This could be realized by the power of Pyodide. Pyodide says, you know, its official website says it's Pyodide is a Python distribution for the browser and Node.js based on WebAssembly. In other words, this is a C Python interpreter compiled for WebAssembly that runs on web browsers, right? So by using Pyodide, we could convert this server client architecture into the serverless architecture, where the server is now only serves the static, initial static files like main.js, index.html, and once that initial static file has been loaded onto the client side, in other words, the uh, um, web browser, everything, everything is working, is running on the web browser, even the Python parts, Python server. So we can say that here, the, you know, the streamless, streamless server is running on the web browser. That's kind of, you know, unique architecture. So due to this conversion, you know, converting architecture into serverless, being serverless, we, ST Lite solves that the, these problems that I have mentioned in the previous slide, for example, offline capability, data privacy, and scalability and maintainability, as well as um, multi-platform capability has also been introduced. That will, I will, uh, we will preview in the next slide soon, in the following slide soon. But, at this moment, um, please let me show you some real demos, examples to show what they um, show what is possible with ST Lite. Oh, sorry, we have to zoom in. The first thing I would like to show is the web page, web app, web platform that you can access this URL. That is named as ST Lite Sharing where you can find here is the editor view and here the preview view, where we can edit the source file. Uh, please note that here is this file, this source code is written in Python. There is no front-end files like JS, HTML, CSS. There is no such files. We can, we can only write Python, right? And do, based on these Python source files, Streamlit application is now running in this uh, right pane, like this. And um, this Streamlit Hello example application is one of the most well-known demo app that Streamlit users know because this is the demo app we encounter when we you know, walk through the quick start tutorial from uh, on the Streamlit of the website. So, to be honest, these applications are not my contribution. This is just uh, copied from the official uh, Streamit official demo page. But interesting point here is that everything is rock, everything is running on the web browser, right? I have never set up Python runtime anywhere. I have just access to this this URL, you know, SDL sharing, and everything is everything has already being able to work there. And you can find several you know, unique features on, of S Streamlit uh, provided by default, for example, like um, data frame manipulation with dynamic filtering, with um, some plotting, plotting components like this. And sorry, I skipped it just a bit, but here is um, a real-time plotting example or something, uh, something like that. And this component gallery example also showcasing what kind of component is available uh, provided by the Streamlit upstream, you know, Streamlit official, official uh, package. Where here is a, the number of available components like this, and you can like, uh, you know, probably you will be satisfied with the, this, the various kind of component that you can use as a building blocks to afford to, to create your web applications with interactiveness, like um, table data editor or some type of web form, and input some input data. Oh, sorry, some input widget like buttons, checkbox. I agree. Okay, great. 
and um, color pickers or whatever else. Let me say that the next example, that is custom component example. As I have said in the very first, uh, very initial slides, custom component is one of the greatest stuff in uh, Streamlit community, right? So I would like to, to demonstrate it is also possible to use such third-party custom component on SD Lite. For example, this is AG grid component that handles uh, some table data. And here is a, a, sorry, a graph component for graph data. And this SD mole is some, um, let's say, bio something, a molecular biology stuff. And I would like also show some multi, I don't know what to say, um, multimedia demo like this. In this demo, um, this in camera is <laughs> taking picture of me and this taken picture will be the input of this application and we can apply some or say manipulation onto this input data, input image with you know vertically horizontal flipping and some some sort of uh, image filtering, or and also there is also a say image analysis. I know, I know, this is kind of a trivial example of computer vision field, right? And and to be honest, it's is I, I just copied from sample code from OpenCV repository or uh, Matplotlib repository. But again, interesting here is that everything is working on the web browser, even with OpenCV or Matplotlib or some such kind of a famous popular uh, uh, libraries, right? Then let's get back to the SD Lite sharing also, and let me show this real-time image processing demo. It looks like what I have just shown is uh, with the input image, but the difference is this is real time, you know, kind of the target domain is real time video stream, not a static image with some type of uh, image filter like this. Oh. Okay, okay, it works. <laughs> and the point here is that I think, I, um, I think this kind of um, real, even uh, either real time and static image, video or sometimes audio can be a typical type of privacy, sen data privacy sensitive data for, because it often includes such kind of sensitive uh, information or like a privacy information, right? So this is again the typical example of the target data domain that ST Lite could be beneficial to, to, to deal with, right? Okay, let's stop this demo right now. And let's get back to the slides. Well, I have been in showcasing what's possible with SD Lite. Like, you know, I, I believe, uh, I, I hope it showed the various purposes or um, targets that we can deal with with SD Lite. And next, I would like to um, explain and introduce several ways of developing and de sorry developing and deploying ST Lite applications or stream Lite applications on ST Lite runtime. Which means that you know, as 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 I have said, ST Lite is running on the web assembly, which means that application, you know, target platform is not only limited to web browser, but also, you know, by using uh, some sort of proper technology like PWA or Electron, that application can be ported to desktop applications or mobile applications or something like that. Like, like that. So let's see the, now, you know, possible target domains. But the first step is, again, is still sharing. This is web-based app. Like, like this. So where you can do everything on this web platform, including editing code and previewing code and sharing this application by copying and pasting this uh, URL because every uh, source files and every source binary data are encoded into this uh, URL string here. So if you copy and paste it into your new tab and open the URL, the application will start, you know, start without editor view, so that you can you you can share your developed applications to the person you want to share, like your colleagues, a friend, or I don't know, any anyone. And 
One, I, I, sorry, I also have one interesting stuff that I have been, you know, hear from my uh, community friends. He said, this platform is also good for education because, you know, teachers do not have to set up the Python runtime for all the class students, right? Then, but sometimes you don't want to use this ST-like domain. So there is also an option to deploy your Streamlit or ST Lite applications on your own website by creating single index HTML file and um, load ST Lite JS and ST Lite CSS from CDN and just pass your Python code as string little to the ST Lite JavaScript API. Um, you, uh, please refer to the details about this in the official readme. And this is another Interesting example, ST like desktop. You can package your Streamlit, applica Streamlit application into a standalone desktop executable that can also be used in even in offline environment. This is this sometimes be beneficial for kind of like I don't know industrial situations where uh, there are some strict data privacy policy or some I don't know some needs for offline environment, right? So and then. Um, I also created some, uh, no some, I created another experimental project that is VS Code extension that uh, realizes in editor preview of Streamlit applications on your VS Code editor. One interesting application of this um, project is uh, iPad. You know, using this extension with VS Code web, you can um, develop, edit, and you know, upload, deploy Streamlit, uh, Streamlit applications, even on your iPad, uh, regardless of whether it's actually needed or not. Well, but I have been explaining the good stuff, good things about Streamlit and the Streamlit, but to be fair, I have to say that there is something that we have to take care of when you use Streamlit instead of Streamlit. There are some differences derived from the differences between Pyodite and the normal Python because Pyodite runs on the web browser environment that is different from the usual, you know, normal environment where the normal Python runs. The very, you know, ma most major differences, differences is event loop and it's derived the problem is with async IO because on the web page, oh, sorry, at first, let's show the example. Um, async io.run cannot be available in SD Lite or even other PyODI runtime because on the browser environment, there is you know, only single event loop. So the, we cannot dispatch another event loop, right? So such kind of a method that create new event loop cannot be available on the web browser. So to address this concern, I and I introduced a top level await special syntax for ST Lite runtime, ST Lite de app developers. By using it, there is, you, you can, you know, use async features without creating async, uh, no, uh, coroutine by async def keyword. So this could be, you know, workaround for the web, uh, web browser dev environment. Oh, sorry, there is only one minute, sorry. Well, to be honest, there is many, so <laughs> the number of remaining slides, so, but I think there is not enough time, so let's skip to the last slide. Please know that everything, every, you know, every um, things that I could not explain in the limited time has been written in the official readme of the Steel Light repository, so please refer to it if you are interested in, and I, believe now you're ready to use SD light and I hope so. Well, and at the very end, I uh, let me uh, express my thank you and thanks for these uh, sponsors. Again, thank you very much for uh, listening to this talk and please put a star in the repository if you are interested in this topic. And also I am open or welcoming to, to the new every any feature request in the bug report. Thank you very much. Thanks for your cheers, insightful talk. We have got a few minutes for Q and A session now. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, okay, first one is what the built-in module in SD light? Ah, good question. Um, precisely, this is um, not built in SD light, but built in pyodide. So you can find the pyodide uh, module list or something like that. Packages built in, oh sorry, pyodide built in package list is found just by you know Googling the, with a keyword like that. Here are some, you know, many well-known or popular packages like, of course, OpenCV, Pandas, NumPy, SciPy, Scikit Learn, Scikit Image, but some machine learning stuff, some machine learning packages are have not been supported yet, like PyTorch or TensorFlow or some, something like that, unfortunately. Thank you. Well, next is what are the differences between Streamlit and Pinecon? Uh, good question, but it's it could be the answer could be long. Uh, long. Well. Not only Streamlit in Pinecon, there is various uh, such kind of pure Python web UI framework family, right? Streamlit, Pinecon, Gradio, well, Panel, Shiny for Python, or I don't know something something like that. So, and each has its specific uniqueness, like and especially these pairs. I think Streamlit, the uniqueness of Streamlit is the stuff I explained in the very initial slides, like um, magical conversion from the static, I don't know, um, simple Python file into interactive application without writing um, callbacks or some such kind of a reactive or imperative code. I usually uh, represent it as a stream it as react-like, you know. So I think this is a unique feature of a stream it, sorry. Thank you. Well, the next is what what the limitation of ST light desktop about the requirements? Well, I'm not sure what it means, but requirements, you mean, you mean some required packages, right? In that sense, every packages, every packages that are available on ST light can be also available on ST light, but it's the same as the list of the pyodide supported packages. So this is a limitation. Um, every pure Python package is available. And also C Python packages supported, you know, listed here are also available. That C extension or some binary extensions compiled from C, Rust, Fortran, or something like that, that are not, not listed here are not supported on SD Lite or neither on SD Lite and SD Lite desktop either. Oh, the next one would be here. Are these frameworks, Streamly Pinecon, finally make us able to get rid of JS? To be honest, I think it's no. Well, for example, if you want to, if you want more fine control on the styles or very well specification of the Front end the UX UI, you will reach at some point where you want to write JavaScript. You know, you want the 100% power of control on this front end application. So, you know, this is kind of a, the di differences of purposes, or, right? So, um, that could be other, like, uh, frameworks like Streamly could be, you know, specified for a uh, demo or prototyping or something like that, especially in the data science machine learning uh, field. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because of the time of this talk is almost up, this is the last question. Okay, I see. Where is the next? What did you, I did, I did. This one? I'm thinking the possibility of using SD light or Streamlit as a presentation, presentation tool for my talk for, uh, preparation in Python APAC. Wow, go! <laughs> I strongly recommend to that, and if, if needed, I must support you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks, big Yuichiros, for giving us a wonderful talk today.
Uh, let's give you each other a big round of uh, applause again. Thank you. Thank you very much.